Ladies and gentlemen, the sun just woke up. M-class solar flare ends 925-day solar snooze. Welcome to the Grand Solar Minimum and the sun, where you can currently see that there are no sunspots, none whatsoever. In fact, this is the region that kicked off that M flare. There's a little tiny dot in this plage. Not even a sunspot designation currently, but it did unleash the strongest solar flare in three years. The M1 solar flare, R1, that peaked at 724 UTC is the first M class flare of a sunspot region that belongs to solar cycle 25. And the first M-class flare in 925 days since Solar Cycle 24's last M-class flare. Now, the flare took place at the east limb from the Earth's point of view and produced a nice coronal wave. Wave goodbye. Here we can see it on the GOES X-ray flux. One minute data. And boom, boom. Double booms, yes. So there was at literally an M1, basically a threshold, another M flare, M0, a C flare, and a high B, all within a 12-hour period from a plage, not even a spot. Now let's blow this up if we can even bigger. See that little brown dot? That would be the only part of this plage considered a spot, and it's fading. Just like all spots during solar minimums, as they turn around and face the Earth, they weaken. So we are in a deep minimum. Here we're looking at the planetary K index. If there's any effect from the coronal mass ejection that came off these M flares, it won't be hitting us for a while based on the models. And here we're going to bring you over to Lasco C2 where you can see not a very major CME event. And Lasco, C3, you can see Nibiru coming into view there from the top left. Not a very big coronal mass ejection associated with this event. Although over here, this bubble is probably 10,000 Earth diameters wide. So there's that. Scale is everything. But we're deep in the solar minimum. We're nowhere near solar max. And it's not necessarily true that we're in cycle 25 yet. That could be the anomalous terminator event we've talked about that it's at the actual flexure point to 25. Could even be an anomaly. Um, I think maybe NASA is saying in about three months, maybe the start of cycle 25. But it's anyone's guess. We could still be dropping lower and lower and lower. These minimas last for decades or hundreds of years, like the Sporer, the Maunder, half a century, the Dalton, a few decades, the Wolf, 100 years, or and so on. And there are ups and downs during these minimums. Even during the Little Ice Age, the temperature fluctuated up and down. Here's a very high resolution map giving you a correlation of central England temperature from 1659 to present. Maunder minimum, clearly in blue, Dalton minimum in pink. And you can see the corresponding angles to the yearly average sunspot numbers. There are going to always be sunspots, even in minimums. And even in minimums, there's going to be temperature fluctuations every year or so up and down. It's not all linear, but we're just at the beginning of the grand solar minimum process. And that means bigger hail and solar storms with our waning magnetosphere. If that M flare was facing us directly, there may have been some major perturbations to the grid. And the increased hail is because at these minimas, Cosmic rays are at all-time highs in humanity, human history, modern history. And this goes for the Arctic as well as California, almost all readings, up, up, and away. Here, 12% in just three years, the north of Sweden. 
So what are, are we to glean from all of this? Well, just because there was an M flare doesn't mean we're anywhere near our solar max. Solar max is cycle 25 won't happen for at least four or five years. And how big the cycle is, we won't know until four or five years. But the next minimum, a decade from now, is going to be lower than any other minimum since the Maunder minimum. And that's going to be very bad. Now, will we make it there in the modern age? Will we rise up in the next two or three years, as of my prediction, by 2023, the grid fails? That's my prediction. I hope it doesn't come true. Are you prepared for that? Because, you know, five years later, if the planet starts to freeze and there's no way you can grow food and there hasn't been electricity for five years, where does that leave you? What's the UVA, UVB, UVC exposure you're going to have? How high will the cosmic rays get? Will we be, have to go underground by then? It's anyone's guess. Hope you got something out of the video. The sun has woken up after three years in deep minimum. Is this the flexure point? And does that mean we have another three years until we come out into cycle 25? We'll wait and see. Share this with like-minded people. Learn how to grow food. Prepare now and be safe. We love you. That's a bow.